Hi everyone, this is Mr Neil Reiter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who attended with fully occluding matted dry earwax and dead skin. And we're just commencing with this, their left ear. Due to the consistency of the wax, you can see it's really dry, matted. I immediately reverted to the St. Mark's ear hook and this more lateral wax was actually quite hard and solid. And I'm just using the hook to chisel through. Now this patient does suffer from chronic earwax impaction. So every year or so they have to have their ears cleaned. They do ironically work for uh, a large high street chain that offers earwax removal, but um, they wouldn't um, attempt to remove th this from the patient's ear without the patient using some earwax softening drops for at least a week. And the patient really doesn't enjoy using the drops and therefore they uh, were recommended to see myself. And um, as you can see, the patient's not used any drops. It's really dry wax. It's not been softened at all. Uh, I actually sometimes find harder dry wax a bit easier to remove because quite often you can remove it in large chunks. With softer wax, it can come away in little pieces. So it can just prolong the procedure. Um, however, it, although this wax in this patient's ear is really dry, um, it didn't come out in big chunks as I was hoping. And I had to really chisel away. And I'm just using the hook here just to go to the posterior canal wall. And this wax is strongly adhered to the ear canal because there's a lot of skin adhesions. Uh, the dead skin in the ear, not only does it attach itself to the surface of the ear canal, but it can envelope itself around this wax plug. And it's almost trapping the wax in and doesn't want to let go. So I'm just trying to separate, um, release the wax, elevate it off the canal walls. And once we've done that, we can start bringing it away. Uh, particularly at the entrance of this patient, so you can see there's quite a few hairs there. But these hairs were found all the way through the wax. It almost looked like a haystack, the wax a bit deeper in. So when we've removed the, 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 the remaining pieces of earwax um, off the eardrum, in both sides, both ears actually, there was so much hairs, there was so much matted it, um, hairs in the earwax. It really did resemble um, the look of a haystack. and. I did ask the patient whether they trim their ear hairs. They, they said they don't. So it's a bit of a conundrum as to how these hairs got there. Because um, the hairs in the ear should only grow on the outer third of the ear, the cartilage portion. That's where the hair follicles are. Um, the bony, the osseous part of the ear canal, there's no hair follicles attached to the, the skin there. So it's not possible for the hair to, to actually um, grow in the inner two thirds of the ear canal. Hence why I was just querying with the patient if they did trim their ear hairs. Um, so I've just now using the Jobson horn and we've removed the outer half of the earwax and all this wax now is, is on the bony part of the ear canal. So where I am now with the Jobson horn, where the canal wall is here, this is the second bend and everything beyond this juncture is the bony part of the ear canal and everything in front of it is the cartilage portion. So whenever we are approaching the bony part of the ear canal, we're just going to be even more cautious than we usually are. Um, and that's because the bony part of the ear canal is a much more sensitive region than the, than the cartilage portion. So I'm now just going back to the hook. I'm trying to just go to the roof. You can see this, this is really heavily impacted. This wax has fully occluded the ear. It's beginning to expand and compress against the ear canal walls. And even with the hook, we're having a bit of uh, trouble just trying to release this. So I've just managed to separate some of the wax from the roof of the ear canal. And I'm just using the, the jobs on horn to glide in to the roof before rotating the hook to get some purchase and some grip into the wax. And once I have, I can bring it out. So I'm going to rotate the hook clockwise, 90 degrees. And we're going to try and remove this off the anterior canal wall. In an ideal world, every time I'm going with a hook and I'm managing to embed the tip of the hook into the wax core, I'm hoping as I come out with the hook that the, the, wax, the entire wax black comes out, but as you can see, it doesn't. So it's quite a crumbly consistency. And again, just to the front part of the ear canal, just trying to roll the wax forwards. 
Whenever we're using the hook, we've got to be careful that once we embed the hook into the core of the wax, that we, as we extract the hook out of the ear, that the, the, the tip of the hook is not left dragging either against the base of the ear canal or the side of the ear canal walls, because that will cut and abrade the ear canal. Um, I have done that before, um, so it's just part of the learning curve. It's, uh, but it's just something to keep an eye out when we, whenever we do our clear wax training courses. I, I do um, to make reference to that a few times, just because it, as you can imagine, it can be a bit uncomfortable for the patient. So I'm just now going to the back part of the ear canal. And again, I'm just trying to separate the wax plug away. I've rotated the hook almost at more than 180 degrees there. Um, but as I got into the, the body of the wax, the hook just dies through it like a hot knife through butter. So I've reverted back to the suction grip here. So we perform micro suction. So a huge chunk come out here. Just trying to tease it out. And you can tell by the colour it's been there for a while. And you may have started noticing there all those hairs. And this is a great image here. So this wax plug is it's lodged right up against the patient's ear, ear, eardrum. Uh, they deny using cotton buds as well. Um, so again, it's just a bit of a unsolved mystery as to how these hairs are here, but there's quite a few. And the problem with matted wax, it's very difficult to get a suction grip. I'm just kissing the surface with the wax, but we've got to be careful. When you don't get a suction grip, sometimes you can force the sucker too much against the waxwork and you're inadvertently pushing the waxwork further in and compress it against the eardrum. So you just going to be very gentle and that's why I've just applied some olive oil medical spray just to lubricate the ear canal walls and just to soften the surface of the wax just enough so I can get a better suction grip. I've just decided to go to the middle here. So you can see it's slightly buried that's because I'm actually performing the procedure whilst the oil is in situ. I find that just works a bit better but of course when you've got oil in the ear and you're suctioning some of that oil is being vacuumed and it's um, it's almost glazing the tip of the endoscope, the lens, as it's traveling up the suction probe. So I can feel that I've got a suction grip here. I don't want to let go. You can see the wax plug moving out of the isthmus. So an isthmus is a narrowing um, of some sort. And in the ear canal, there's two isthmuses. The first narrowing is between the first and second bends, so around a centimeter within the ear canal. And then as we approach the eardrum, the eardrum narrows and it widens again. So that narrowing near the eardrum is also called the isthmus. So that wax plug, you can see it was attached to the, 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 the um, hammer bone um, on the, the eardrum. There was a bit of skin there. So as we removed that, it just detached itself from the eardrum. You may have seen that bit of uh, dead um, skin. That was the residual dead skin on the patient's eardrum. So we now moved over to the patient's right ear and similarly to the left, I've immediately used the ear hook. There's a bit of dead skin there that I just used the side of the hook, um, the L bend. Almost, um, the ear hook looks like a hockey, um, hockey stick and I was just using the side of the hockey stick just to glide that dead skin out. This ear I would say is a bit narrower. So it's just, Again, just using the hook, trying to get over, beyond this dry wax and skin. There's a lot more dead skin, I would say, in this ear than the patient's left side. And slowly but surely we're bringing it out. So that came out uh, quite a significant piece. And as I was bringing it through some of the tail end of that wax and dead skin plug, I'd just broken off. So again, this wax was really tightly packed and there's a lot more hairs as well, so I'm just trying to get in and behind. So that's the posterior canal wall, the back part of the ear canal. I've managed to glide the hook in and behind and then slowly come out. And this is where you need a good grasp of the ear uh, anatomy. So as I'm bringing that hook out, that tip of the hook is it's, it's embedded in the, in the wax plug, so I can't see it, it's out of view because we've embedded it. And that's when you need to know the anatomy. So as I'm bringing this hook out, which way I need to go. So I know with this patient, the, the bend is from the left to right, um, near the entrance, I have to elevate the hook. So I have to go upwards because that ear canal just has a bit of a divot, has a bit of a dip near the entrance. Again, nice large piece. And it just broke off again, the tile end. It's 
quite a few hairs in there, as you can see. And although I've removed quite a lot already, there's still a substantial amount of wax still in the ear. And, uh, once more, I'm just using the, the elbow, the, the L bend, the 90 degree bend of the hook, just to glide this forward. You can see there's a big piece coming out here. It's got all that dead skin that's just enveloped around the circumference of the wax plug. Just a nice little gap there for me to get the hook in behind once more. So every time I went back in, I thought, surely not. I thought, uh, I've, I must have got all the wax out. So there was quite a significant impaction in there. So when you've got a, a narrow ear canal like this, with the endoscope, you use it to your advantage. You use the left-hand side of the endoscope, this is the patient's right ear, to push up against the left-hand side of the ear canal. And because we're on the outer third, the cartilage portion, the ear canal will stretch by just manipulating the endoscope inside. And that opens up the remainder of the ear for me to insert the instrument. It also helps to straighten the ear. As you can see, I've just stretched the ear to the left, and that's already stretch and straighten the ear. I'm gonna go back in with again. I think I'm gonna use the vacuum now. And almost identical to the patient's left ear, it, got, it looks like a haystack, this wax plug. I'm just gonna wriggle it left to right and bring it through and out of the ear. It's just trapped there. I don't think there's a great suction grip because of all the hair, but I might revert to the heel hook, we should see, just to scoop it out. There we are, so it's going to go to the roof of the ear canal. I'm going to just rotate and flex the ear hook and get in and behind. And once again, I've managed to remove that for the patient. I think there's just a little bit left. You can see the posterior portion of the eardrum. You can see that blue tinge there, so that's the eardrum revealing itself. As I was going for that, um, haystack wax plug. There's a bit of dead skin that got caught in the sucker, so I just decided to get that out of the way. There's quite a, another huge piece there. And this wax plug, it's lodged on the right-hand side, and we call that the anterior recess. So if you remember when I was describing the isthmus in the left ear, so when the ear canal narrows and widens again, near the eardrum, it creates a recess to the right-hand side of the ear canal near the eardrum. We call that the anterior. So anterior is the medical phrase for um, towards the front. Uh, the posterior is the opposite, so it's the back part of the, the ear. And it whacks quite often, especially if people are using cotton buds. So hence why, again, the hairs are uh, in the ear, uh, the wax is impacted against the eardrum, it's lodged in the, uh, into the anterior recess. So, all the telltale signs is, even if this patient's not using Q-tips or cotton buds, they are, it would appear to putting something else in there. Now it could just be they're using um, ear inserts or sleep plugs or swim plugs. So it might just be a legitimate reason there. I did ask the patient, but they um, said they don't. So, um, and that's all the, uh, the wax and dead skin. You can see some of that's pitch black, so that's the older segments of the wax and dead skin. It's oxidized. And I decided to put it next to a pencil. You can see it's quite, when I put it side by side, it does tally up. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, stay tuned. I've got loads more videos to upload in due course. Thank you, bye.